Click the first link in the description for the best Ask Reddit content. My probably autistic roommate, 20M, has anger issues and makes the rest of my roommates and myself, 18M, feel uncomfortable and unsafe. Hey guys, so I, 18M, recently moved to college in Arizona with two of my close friends and their brothers. Our apartment had three two-person bedrooms, so my friends and their brothers took two, and I took the one with the mystery person, 20M. Since we've moved in he's seemed off. He's been mostly friendly, but when he gets annoyed he yells and whines, like when we paused a movie to wait for a friend. This morning I woke up at 6am to slamming cupboards and doors, including the one in my room. I just tried to fall back asleep, but I heard him moaning in the bathroom. I walked in and the face of one of the vanity's drawers was ripped off the nails, and the rest of the drawer was slammed and stuck. He immediately apologized and said he gets worked up sometimes over things from the past and breaks things. He then proceeded to panic over the cost of the broken drawer, and I had to calm him down so he wouldn't wake everyone else up. I'm nearly 100% sure he is on the spectrum, especially since I worked with many of the kids with autism at my school, and the way he acts around the house reminds of them a lot. How do I deal with him? He's a nice dude overall, but he has some serious anger issues that are easy to set off, not to mention he's a big guy, about a foot taller than me. It makes me and all my other roommates uncomfortable. Don't want him to get mad and start breaking my stuff or the apartments. I don't want to have to pay for damages he's done just because we share a room and bathroom. Too long didn't read. My large and probably autistic roommate got mad and ripped the face off of a drawer at 6am and I don't know what to think of that. Any advice y'all? Edit, just got out of class and will work on responding to all comments. Thanks. It's nice that you want to be sensitive to your roommate who has different needs from you, but there are plenty of people on the autism spectrum who refrain from this type of behavior. Please don't let that stand in the way of your safety in your own home. This depends how you feel about him and what you want to do. Are you genuinely afraid of him? Do you want him to move out? If you do just want to talk to him, do it while he is chill, not in the moment when he is stressed. Talk calmly and express some clear boundaries, in a fair way that's not too harsh. I have a family member with autism. You need to remember that if he is in university and living alone he is pretty high functioning and can learn to curb his behavior to some extent. Hopefully he is getting some support elsewhere, and can continue to work on these issues. Simply remind him it's not okay to break other people's things, or shared things, that this is something he will need to work on. Next time he is upset he needs to pay attention and either sit down, or go for a walk to chill himself out before he starts trying to do any activities in the home where he might get frustrated. You can really only encourage him, and direct his attention to notice it's an area he will need to work on, and see where it goes from there. I'll certainly try that thanks. I'd only want him to move out if he keeps acting like this. Other than the outbursts he's fine. I'm not afraid of him, but I've only know him a week. Is this college run housing or off campus? It's off campus approved by the university. Forget your diagnosis of the guy, you should be looking out for yourself, which makes the reason for his destructive behavior less relevant. It sounds like university housing, I might be wrong, by typically people renting an apartment don't have a mystery person, and if a person that your school matched you up with turns out pretty quickly to be someone who gets worked up sometimes over things from the past and breaks things, and who's bigger than you, and who makes you all concerned for your safety and your cost for his outbursts, you need to contact housing and tell them all of that. The sooner the better too. When I was in college I waited too long to report my issues with my roommate and I was stuck with her vindictive ass for the rest of the semester. I think all of this entirely depends on where you live. If this is an apartment with a private landlord, you're all responsible for the damages he causes if everyone's name is on the lease. Do you all have separate leases? University housing is so varied that it really depends. All of you could be on the same lease, 
or each of you could have a separate lease for your bed, there may be separate leases for the rooms, who knows. If this is a university run housing situation, then I would talk to someone at the university so maybe they can find him alternate arrangements. While I'm sympathetic to the fact he has autism, he chose to live with other people, so he needs to figure out a way to control himself. You and your roommates should not have to worry about walking on eggshells in your own home in order to avoid setting him off. People have asked for roommate changes over much, much less. If this is a private landlord, not affiliated with the university, it still may be worthwhile to reach out to the landlord and let them know what's going on. If this roommate is going to destroy the property, the landlord may choose to terminate their lease. I also think it's worth mentioning that it's not your responsibility to help this person manage their anger issues and or autism. If they are not in a position to live in an apartment without destroying things, respecting boundaries, and observing common courtesy, then unfortunately this person is not in a position to live with other people and should probably live alone or with family. A guy, 31 slash M, I, 29 slash F, went on three dates with a year ago left a gift and a letter on my doorstep. Is this romantic or a red flag? I, 29 slash F backslash, met, 31 slash M backslash, the guy in question on Tinder around this time last year. We had a lot of chemistry and common interests, so we'd end up talking for a few hours each date. Honestly, those few dates have been some of the best I've been on in the past year. On the third, he spent the night at my place, and we made plans to go to an event at a museum the following weekend. The following weekend arrives, and I hadn't heard from him. Eventually, I send a WhatsApp. Do we still have plans? Text. A few hours later, he responds saying that he'd run into his ex at a concert and that he'd lied to me about something in order to keep her from finding out we'd been talking. I never responded to the text, just deleted his number and moved on. We haven't spoken since. Anyway, yesterday I found a gift and a long letter on my doorstep. The letter is partly an explanation and an apology for how things ended last year. He wrote that this was his first serious girlfriend, so he believed he was doing the right thing by giving it every last effort. It goes on to say that he's been thinking about me almost every day, wants to tell me anytime something good happens to him, craves my opinions about things, and how he has never had so much in common with someone or able to connect so easily. It's a pretty thoughtful letter that references things about the dates we'd been on and I told him about myself. The gift was a personalized shirt and a few other thoughtful small things. He left his number for me to call if I was willing to talk. He's obviously putting in a lot of effort to have a chance to talk, but I'm wondering if some things in this letter might be a red flag. I really liked and was interested in him, but we'd only gone on three dates. In my experience, I've found people who are intense very quickly also tend to pretty abruptly lose those feelings later. That's also essentially what happened the last time we dated, from making plans and getting to know one another to just not hearing anything from him for a few days, so that makes me feel wary too. I'm also cautious because he lied to me before and lied to his ex too to keep her from knowing we were talking, and that gives me a lot of pause and makes me wonder whether this could all be manipulative. I'm hoping an outside perspective will be helpful here. On the one hand, the few dates we went on were great, and I believe people can change and mature with experience. On the other, the way things ended between us last year was pretty shitty, and I don't know if the intensity of this letter might be a red flag. I appreciate your thoughts, and I can provide more info if necessary. Too long didn't read, guy, 31 slash m backslash, I dated, 29 slash f backslash a year ago has come back into the picture after things ended badly between us. He left a gift and a letter on my doorstep yesterday. Is this all a giant red flag or should I be willing to give it another chance? I think the comments here are, as usual, a bit much. Do you feel a comparable intensity slash passion for this guy in the way he describes? Do you want to see him? Three dates isn't objectively a lot, but if you have three separate instances of spending hours on end having meaningful conversation, then you may have had the equivalent of what 10 dates would have been with someone else. I think it's entirely possible that he's rebounding and in some way yes, you might be second choice. 
that's due to shitty timing, not him not liking you as much. It's kind of nice that he tried to make things work with his ex, even if that burned you. The one thing I'll say is this, it sucks that he lied. It sounds like he immediately told you the truth though, right? I can definitely see myself lying to an ex and not telling them on a date immediately after a breakup because well, why would they need to know? I'd I'm sure I'll get downvoted here. But I don't see a reason for you not to talk to this guy if and only if, you want to. If you legitimately have the heebs from the interaction and don't want to, then great. If you feel like maybe you're overanalyzing and a hangout could be fun, also great. Don't dive back in head first, take things slow. If you decide to say yes, I'd keep it low key because he is clearly intense. Good luck. Because he doesn't have a lot of relationship experience I think he's overestimating and overvaluing the connection that he made with you over those three dates. He's probably projected what a relationship with you would be like and filled in a lot of the unknowns with his fantasy slash imagination. Now having said all of that, that doesn't necessarily mean that a relationship with him wouldn't work. You could proceed cautiously if you're interested. I think you have gauged the situation perfectly in your fourth paragraph. He sounds like an intense and probably flighty person. He's probably just broke up with the ex again and reminiscing on your past dates. I frankly think that's super rude when people reach out again after their preferred option didn't work out, no one wants to be second choice. I don't think he's dangerous or anything but I'd be super wary of him after he dropped you like a hot potato. I'd respond to him that you're not interested and make that boundary firm. Good luck. Ted Mosby's on the rebound and still making impulsive emotional decisions. Other folks have it covered in terms of red flags. I just wanted to comment on the great first dates thing. While that's a great thing, and a great feeling when it happens, but it's not nearly as significant as it feels in terms of relationship potential. Think about it like getting in a new car and how the seat feels. If it feels great, that's a good thing, but it says nothing about the reliability or performance or value of the car, and that perfect feeling seat can turn out to have horrible lumbar support and one that feels a bit more awkward at first might end up being a much better fit and support your back much better over the medium to long term. It's my 18th birthday and nobody remembered it. I, 18F, have friends who I thought I was really close with, including my best friend since second grade. But everyone has apparently forgotten my birthday. Even my dad and my sister, 22F, didn't remember, literally the only person that said anything was my mom who lives in a different state, and she just sent me $50 as a present. To be honest, I feel really sad right now and I'm questioning everything. I've always been the one to organize surprise parties or go all out for my friends' birthdays, and having nobody reciprocate, or even just send me a happy birthday text, makes me incredibly disappointed. Even when I wasn't the one at the helm, other people in my friend group have always led birthday efforts. I'm turning 18. This is one of the big ones, one of the days that's supposed to be all about you. I feel really alone and like nobody cares, but I also feel selfish and entitled for making such a big deal out of people forgetting because I know that they probably didn't do this on purpose and there's so many bigger problems in the world right now. Basically, I just feel both like a terrible person and terrible in general. Should I confront people about this and what would I say? I think it's a little awkward for me to just say that I'm disappointed in people for not saying anything. Or maybe that's just my fear of confrontation, but at the same time if I do nothing I'm just going to feel even worse the next time someone else's birthday comes around and I'm expected to celebrate or organize something for the birthday person. Too long didn't read, nobody remembered that my 18th birthday is today and I feel sad both because of the situation and because I feel sad sad that I'm sad. I'm not sure if I should talk to people about it or not.
I feel you, my mom, friends, basically everyone forgot my birthday. The only person who remembered was one friend and my dad. I felt like crap that day and cried in my room but I was thankful that at least two people remembered. Even my teacher remembered but no word from my mom which was the one that hit me hard. It was the day after track practice and my mom picked me up by herself. I was waiting patiently that maybe the reason why she didn't say anything is because she had a surprise but I was just flattering myself. Turns out she didn't give a crap. Happy 18th birthday fellow stranger. Nobody did anything for my 21st birthday, the one friend I had planned to do something with ditched me on the day. I was really low and couldn't stop comparing myself to other people on social media who were going on holiday or getting a new car as a birthday gift for their 21st. I don't think my 18th was much celebrated either. It hurts but I realized that I had to push to make my own plans for it. Sadly no one was ever going to give me a surprise party. But I've planned a small lol girl's birthday dinner, going to the movies, picnic in the park with friends, that I made a few years later and were much better than friends I had at age 18. My family still don't acknowledge my birthday, but I make sure to treat myself on the day and not get pulled down by their failures. I'm 29 now. I've never had big birthday celebrations but next year I'm hoping to go to Paris for my 30th. Op I don't really have any advice to offer but happy birthday! Exclamation mark.